From Studio 3 at Buzz TV, it's The Horse's Mouth with Tom McManus. All right, time once again here for The Horse's Mouth at the bar. Back at Tommy Max, a Boy Scouts of America special edition. Brought to you by our friends at Sonova's Bank and, of course, at Goodfellas Cigar Lounge and Spirits. Our good friend David Silic is back at the bar. David, how are you, my man? Tommy, thanks for having me. Always great to see Appreciate you. Appreciate it, man. You brought some uh, former Cub Scouts, Eagle Scouts, Star Scouts, all kinds of scouts from the Boy Scouts of America. Well, we've got our big... Uh American Values Dinner scheduled for a week from tomorrow. Okay. Um, that's our largest fundraiser of the year okay. for North Florida Council. Nice. And uh, it helps support all the programming that we have in Northeast Florida. Uh, you know, we graduated more than 20, uh, two, or rather, for the 15th year in a row, more than 200 Eagle Scouts. Wow. Uh, Very cool. The program last year. And awesome. Preparing young men and, and women now Yep. Uh, for a productive for life adulthood. getting right. them ready for life no right. doubt about it anthony cantonese and philip o'donnell here from startup hey, jacks anthony how are you yeah great philip thanks for being here welcome to the bar man appreciate it how you guys doing excellent so right, good let's talk talk about boy scouts first before we get into startup so you're an eagle scout yeah right took a lot of time effort you had to do it by the time you're 18 i've learned that since david has been bringing on all types of eagle scouts to the to the program but what did being in the boy scouts and being an eagle scout do for you then and do for you now. Yeah, I've been thinking a lot about this. Yeah. Um, I feel like I got Eagle a little too young. I was um, I got it like right at the end of eighth grade. So I was like 13 wow. or so. Yeah. And I just cranked through Prodigy. it. So <laughs> one thing that's horrible about being an Eagle Scout is that um, everybody expects you to do knots, but I don't I don't know my knots enough. Okay. So, but anyway, um, but what's cool about <laughs> Eagle is that you're constantly pushing towards a certain goal and you just don't yeah. get that in like early school like in middle school sure like you have the goals of like a track that's already laid out for you but you get to choose your own adventure and yep. you kind of get to be the master of your own destiny yeah um that's something that was like the first taste of that that i ever had so that yep. was cool how about you philip I, I hear a lot uh the planning not just being you know disciplined and ready but planning to be ready as well it seems like a big one yeah, yeah, I think a, a big thing for me in scouting, and I didn't make it all the way to Eagle Scout level and, yep. and always mark that. Star as sort Scout, of a, though, right? The Star Scout, yeah, it's the first level where you get yes. to uh, say that you're a, a kind Cheers. of scout. Yeah, I appreciate yep. that. Uh, I think the thing that really meant a lot for me was, uh, you know, it's, it's a great opportunity to get outside, and uh, I think you'll notice if you look at uh, tech in general, you know, a lot of people are, are, are more outdoors inclined, and so yep. there's, there's a lot more overlap than you think. Uh, to people are doing that and sure if you're not in an experience where people are really pushing you to get out there to do some camping to light a, a fire we're talking about lighting you know get yeah. something going and things you never really appreciate that until you've been able to do it and then yeah. it, it puts you back in that mindset of like oh yeah. i need to be a part of the world around me and not just kind of in front of my yeah. computer all day yeah. that's the message that that we yeah. constantly get in terms of watch castaway and you'll get it exactly, <laughs> you know, right, 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 right. exactly. when he gets the fire in the base that, like, that is exactly oh, where it goes right, right. Exactly. exactly he doesn't even know what to do all right let's talk startup jacks anthony this is You've been, you're the early founder, yeah, and of course, uh, Phillips, now you're, uh, you're your new partner brought on, but tell us about Startup Jacks, how you got it started. Yes, yeah, so we've been doing Startup Jacks now since about 2013 or so, oh, wow. 2014, oh, so wow. we've been running for a while. We have about 1,400 members all across the city from okay. people that are starting hair salons to people that are doing some, uh, I don't know if you've heard about Redwire or Made in Space, like okay. they're some of our earliest uh, yep. entrepreneurs that joined us, yep. and uh, yeah, it's just a place to go and just find your tribe. You okay. know, when and grab a beer. Support, kind of a support group type? It, it turns into that yeah. because I, I yeah. think yeah, as an entrepreneur, you're going through a very different experience than most people are going through with a day right. job. And right. it's hard to really connect with people to know what that means unless you're talking to another entrepreneur. Yep. And there's, by definition, it's hard to find because they're working on their project, right? They're in right. their house. And so uh, thematically here, you sort of get that. It's like a reason to get out. It's a reason to interact with other people that have yep. your same mindset and your same thought process. Yeah, definitely. And I, I think it's very cathartic for people to be able to have yeah, that experience. Give you some comfort, yeah. right? Because it's yeah, hard. Yeah, yeah. It, it yeah. is hard. I'm an entrepreneur. I mean, some people would say playing in the NFL, you're an entrepreneur, right? You're in business for sure. yourself. Yeah, take care of yourself. Sure. That's Absolutely. your entity yeah. until that's over. And then you got to figure it out from there. But I tell you, the, the, the lean times is when you find out whether you want to be an entrepreneur or not. Yeah, and that's, well, that, that's when the vision's got to carry you more yep. than the monetary totally. reward, right? Absolutely. And you, yeah, that's why they talk about entrepreneurs a lot about passion, because yep. that passion is what's going to carry you through yep. that that up and down. Yep. And I think the other thing that we talk about a lot 
realize the importance of, of going on the entrepreneur journey with someone else yep. as a partner, as a co-founder, yep. not just for spreading the work around, but you get the natural ebb and flow of your sort of emotional cycle. And yep. when you're really up, they might be down and the right. other way around and you yep. kind of balance each other out. And so that's why when we first started, even with, you know, you can call this a startup, we like to think of yeah. it that way, sure. that, that we balance each other out too. And then yep. you can carry that through to a lot of cases. Yeah, no So doubt. you guys uh, um, have people come in and exchange information, exchange information and, and do uh, roundtable discussions? Yeah, on which networking. We, yeah. we have a couple of different formats. Okay. So a lot of times we'll have people come out and do talks. Sometimes it's just a happy hour. We just get people together. And again, like it's to get that camaraderie going. Yep. Uh, a lot of times it's where we'll have an expert come in and talk about like, hey, this is why you need a patent or this is how this yeah, works. Right. And they just talk yeah. through the mechanics cool. of as your business is growing, this is how you should be thinking about things. Yeah. So it, we're not really trying to we try to we want it to be networking, but networking because people are on the same journey as you, not yep. necessarily to sell services. Yep. Yeah. How about the um, cause entrepreneurs like when you when you come up with an idea or a project, right? You all, you you believe in it so much. How do you? What's what's the message to them to like? Because I always felt like, look, put it out to your really good friends that are going to tell you the truth. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Whatever it is, a script, yeah. a project, whatever. Someone you trust that's going to say. Yeah, or wow, kind of cool, you know, yeah. that that circle. Maybe it's part of your group, right? But how do you, because everyone has great ideas. Like they think they have great ideas and some are great. And some are great just to that person, right? We, mm -hmm. It's just it's just tough. Yeah. But how do you get that message across? Like, all right, here, look, we're all dreamers. That's what entrepreneur, I'm a dreamer. I've been one forever. Yeah. But sometimes you got to be real too. And yeah. sometimes that dream's maybe not attainable as you think it is. It's tough. It's a tough conversation. It's, it's, it's very but tough. But without it, very hard. I think it's, you know, because entrepreneurs need that. They need that. Okay. You know what? Maybe yeah. that's not the path. Maybe I have another idea. Maybe I have another project. Maybe there's something else sitting there for me. But yeah, you, I'm you, speaking you, from experience. No, no. Record, yeah, no. That, 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 uh, that validation step, right? Yeah. The, the earlier you can get that feedback in the most honest way, yeah. you're just going to save yourself a lot of time because it's easy to get Definitely. caught up in an idea, right? And yeah. you get really passionate about it. Totally. And, and especially in the, uh, the tech space because most of what you're doing isn't uh, talking to people. It's going to sit in front of a computer and coding stuff. Right. And that's fun. For, yeah. for coders, right? And so yeah. you 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 build this whole product that you spend a year coding something and then you put it out there and people are like, well, uh, that, that's not of any interest to me. And no, it's right. like devastating. Yeah, right. So, right. you know, the right. faster right. you can get in front of people and, and you're absolutely right. And the groups like this can be a great help because chances are yep. you'll, you'll, you'll find that entrepreneurs that operate in a certain space tend to come up with ideas that are pretty similar. Yeah. And if you come and say, oh, I've got this great thing, chances are somebody in that room is going to raise their hand and say, hey, I tried that. Here's yeah. the five things you need to know. Yeah, Not yeah. to say stop, no, right. but just here's what you're going to have to figure out that yeah. maybe you don't know Yeah, they've yeah. been now, down the path. Right? Totally. They've been down the path yeah. and they've seen it. Yeah. What my favorite people are that come in are people that have those big ideas, but it's so big, it's almost it's almost deafening. Yeah, <laughs> right, right, um, right, it's right. suffocating for them. They have no idea how to even get started. Yeah. So, without trying to kill their idea, you help them whittle it down into like what's the one little thing that you know you what can do is, really yeah. well. Like that yeah. first couple of steps are the most yeah. important. Yeah. So just getting people going yeah. is a it's big part of It's hard to do everything. Oh, it is. But yeah. if you find the right yeah. niche and make that great as you can, it, it can yeah. work. There's and and, and that, that works from the idea too, is, yeah. is, is simplifying into sort of the, yeah. the, the, the word they use, a minimum valuable product. But it's like the first thing you can do to get out there and yeah. get feedback on, yeah. laser focus on that. Don't get caught up in all the different things that it can do or that you can do. Yeah. Because if you don't know what's going to work, then you don't know where it goes from totally. there and, and you're just sort of spreading yeah, your I'm bets. I'm so glad you guys are. And you never you know, It's huge. I, yeah. After I retired, uh, after 30 years with the business journals, I bought the franchise with another partner here in Northeast Florida, uh, the Alternative Board, uh -huh. which is a peer advisory group. Um, yeah. For most of our uh, members are, you know, second, third stage type businesses that are in the two to ten, twenty million dollar space. Yeah. Um, yeah. But they serve as each other's sounding board. Yeah, that's great. As they're growing, yep. and you know, you guys are doing that yeah. in the startup community. Yep. I yeah. applaud you for totally. it. And their yeah. their challenges are different from. You know, the, the kid that wants to code, you right. know, the next Facebook, yeah, it's, right. it's a different experience. And so yeah. having different groups that they can connect with 
it, it, it lets them feel like they're part of something bigger and, and they're not totally. just doing it on well, their own. Well, fellas, hey, yeah. keep up the great work, Absolutely. man. Thanks for being Cheers. on the Thanks show. For having us. I know you're an A. Hey, listen, Jacksonville's grown. There's a ton of entrepreneurs out there, and they need that. Uh, that Absolutely. Group. And we're just starting yeah. to see that attention again now yep. that people are starting to get out there again. We've got over 140 members. Uh, 1,400. 1,400. 1,400. Wow. On, on the meetup. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. so yeah. activating that group has been yeah. a big part of getting back into the swing of things. Well, cheers, Thank you for helping Thanks for coming on. Thanks a lot. Absolutely. All right. That'll do it for us. This time around here on uh, The Horse's Mouth at Tommy Max at the bar. We're talking business, talking life, talking good times in Jacksonville, this great city. Until next time, stay safe and be cool. And we'll see you right here on The Horse's Mouth. Cheers. This is a Clydesdale. Despite what you see in the commercials, he doesn't play football. He won't bring me a cold one as much as I wish he would. He does not fall easily in love with his kitty cat pals, of which he has none. He's just really good at being a horse on this ranch. I run with help from my banker at Sonovas, Bank of Here. Really, Bruce? From Studio 3 at Buzz TV, it's The Horse's Mouth with Tom McManus. All right, welcome into the horse's mouth here, brought to you by Sonovas Bank, back at the bar, back at Tommy Max, and we're talking Boy Scouts of America. David Silik is back once again. David, how are you, my friend? Tommy, good. It's great to see you, man. Sharp dressed man, too. Thanks for having me back. You know, you can go from looking like you uh you're Hemingway on the water <laughs> to like you're in front of a board meeting or something. Well, I had some coaching sessions today, so okay. I gotta dress up a little very bit. Very nice. That. We got an Eagle Scout with us, Michael yeah. Linton. Hi, Michael. Thank you very much for having you're me. You're a student at Cornell University. Yes, sir. One what, only. what year are you uh are there? I'm going into my senior year now. Took a little bit of a gap semester to, you know, spend time with family and okay. and enjoy the floor of the sun. Nice. So nice. really just enjoying time at home, working for IBM and okay. ready to go back soon. Are you uh, are you from Jacksonville then? You grew up Born there? and raised, All I think right. Memorial Hospital. Oh, native. Native. Where'd you go to high school? Ridgeview High School. Okay. Uh, I was on the swim team there and okay. great memories there. I was actually homeschooled third to eighth grade. So you okay. can envision a, a Huge drastic change from being the kid at home to being one of many at a public high school. Would you swim? What was your race? I was into breaststroke. I actually okay. had wow. probably a few school records back then in breaststroke. Okay. But, um, really a phenomenal time going into high school and yeah. the people you meet. That's great, man. So tell me about being an Eagle Scout and what it's done for you. I mean, you just, so you're not the far youngest past Eagle 18. Scout, I was going to say, yeah, Eagle you're, you're just past had, 18, right? Like you have to do it by the time you're 18, right, to be an Eagle yes, Scout? Yes, yes. Tell us what it's done for you and your, your life so far. It, it's been something that's really developed me into the person I am. I know probably I could sum it up in one sentence, and this was the motto our Scoutmaster gave us of make a better version of yourself every day. And at the time, you could envision, like, I'm doing this in middle school. So, you know, you start in middle school, you can end it up in high school. And at the moment, you don't really think about it too much. But then when you leave the program, you know, you got your Eagle Scout, you're done, you're out yeah. in the real world. Yeah. You think about those ideals that are kind of engraved in you. And I realized going into job interviews and they ask you, so what are you all about? Yeah. And I, I question myself, what am I all about? Well, it's about making a better version of yourself every day. Yeah. Whether that's health, mental or spiritual or personable skills, yep. it's about finding those opportunities to just improve on a daily basis. Cool. And I taking those into being an intern. I mean, it's a big company. You're going to move on to another big company. I mean, the, yes. they got to come with you every day. I would imagine. Exactly. And you know the the great thing about Boy Scouts is it prepares you in so many different ways. They have the merit badges, like a scout is yep. trustworthy, loyal, helpful, all those things. So. When you've had those ideals <laughs> since you've been very young, yeah. you can come into a company and they see, oh, this kid's an Eagle Scout. We know what he's about. Yeah, right, he comes right. from a lineage of people that are citizens of the community, yeah. servant leaders. Yeah. I think and, you got, and, I think you're we, a spokesperson. And remember, <laughs> uh, and remember we, we learned yeah. that uh, uh, Eagle Scouts that go into military service yes. go in um, as an officer, above, right? Yeah, yeah. Not an officer, but a grade, right. a grade above. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's huge. Absolutely. Absolutely. So what does the future hold for you, man? What, so what, are we what in you finance? What do, you, what do you study? So I am uh, applied economics and management. And right now I'm a okay. finance analyst for IBM. But really with this Boy Scouts thing, it's always uh, given me the opportunity to do more things. So, you know, okay. one of the things is be prepared. Yeah. I think luck really comes with 
preparedness and then opportunity. Absolutely. So in high school, I was an intern for Congressman, the previous Congressman Yoho, now Kat Kamek. Okay, yeah. Then I did an internship for Florida Blue out okay. here in Jacksonville, cool. one for Ernst & Young. So really a variety of things, but the whole part of Boy Scouts is the idea of being prepared. So just bringing what I have to the table, yep. taking everything I can from the table in a you know equitable yep. way, not like, here, let me get yeah. it all. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's a back right. and forth relationship. And yep. really the future is whatever, uh, whatever opportunity comes by. My main goal is just being prepared to the best of my ability. Cool. and hoping to make an impact on the community. Awesome, man. Michael, what awesome. was your Eagle Scout project? My Eagle Scout project, I made pet beds for a local safe animal shelter, well, which right. I ended up getting a little baby cat afterwards. That was, uh, that was cool. great. Yeah, yeah, man, that's a great cool. project. Yes, yeah, good project. Yeah, uh, there's a lot of, uh, especially the, uh, out at the beach, there's yeah. cats everywhere, pets <laughs> everywhere. They run everywhere. There's but always you know, an opportunity to help the community. Totally. I really think... Um, yep. It comes down to, you know, you see on the news so many negative things. Well, it's about yep. the little things where you can do, helping the older lady with your yep. bags. Yep. You see a pothole, and if you know the skills, why don't you fill it? Like, yep. those little opportunities to be a citizen, that's yep. what I think Boy Scouts is all about yep. and why you see so many incredible individuals yep. that come out of that program. Michael's, I tell this to my oldest daughter, who's 21. I said, your generation is going to leave a lasting impression on this country. That's right. You're going to do something special That's right. about caring about people and getting away from all this craziness, all this division, all this stuff. You're younger. You're going to, because you're going to see it. You're going to be like, you know what? That doesn't. We're better together than divide, right? Come on. Yeah. We're better together. All of us. Doesn't matter what you look like or who you pray to, who you vote for. We all, we're better together. And your generation, I think, understands it. I yeah. think you now, really do get it. What troop were you in? I was so that's one of the interesting things. I was originally in Troop 425, but they disbanded when I was, I believe it was Life Scout, which is right before Eagle Scout. Uh -huh. yep. And so there were two big occasions where I practically quit scouting for like a few months. And that was one of those occasions. And my mom really pushed me to be like, do you want to come out of something that since I was in Cub Scouts, so this is way, I've, I've done yeah. a ton of scouting. Yeah. She said, do you want to come out of this? knowing that you quit or do you want to come out saying hey i was at the finish line and i dug my heels and i crossed that line yeah and so my mom really inspired me to get the job done cool. went to troop 653 out in middleburg did my eagle scout project uh helped a lot of those kids there as well and, and cool. i was able to say hey you know what i didn't quit i, I did it i finished it that's right congratulations yes yeah. Great having you on, brother. Thank Keep up you. the great work, man. That's it's, it's good stuff. David, you always bring totally. the best guests, man. <laughs> always. Seriously. So. All right. That'll do it for us this time around. Another edition uh, highlighting the Boy Scouts of America, the Eagle Scouts, and all that they, they've learned and what they take with them into their other aspects of their life, man. We talk about business. We talk about the community. We talk about sports, life right here on the horse's mouth. Always a great time at Tommy Max. And brought to you by our friends at Sonovas Bank. So until next time, be safe. And stay cool. We'll see you right here on the horse's mouth. Cheers. Feel a new level of comfort with underwear for men. Created for men with an active lifestyle and designed for sports, work, medical, and everyday wear. Underwear for men has a special patented drawstring pouch which allows you to adjust the perfect custom fit around your manhood. It allows you the separation you need and the support you deserve. The drawstrings adjust to isolate and support. The mesh pouch cools and comforts. The tailored fit won't rubber chafe. A tagless plush waistband sized to fit a man's waist and materials that are quick dry and moisture wicking. Underwear for men is available in all your favorite styles and colors. In briefs, trunks, and 6-inch and 9-inch boxer briefs, and in your choice of cottony, extra-cool, viscose, or polyester fabrics. Underwear for men. Support your manhood. From Studio 3 at Buzz TV, it's The Horse's Mouth with Tom McManus. All right, time once again for the horse's mouth here at Tommy Mags, back at the bar, brought to you by our friends at Sonovas Bank. We're talking business, we're talking art, we're just talking good times here in Jacksonville. Patrick Hetherington is back from Sonovas. How you doing, my friend? Great, man. Good to see you. Likewise. How's life been treating you? 
banking world the same? Any any better than I be you. That's good, man. Great to see you as always. <laughs> Stephanie is here. Varone, how are you? Great. You, you are our musician, entertainment. You yeah. are an artist. Welcome to the show. Thank how are you, you doing? I'm excited to be here. You're I'm new. Uh, you're uh, from Minnesota, right? Been I here am. About three Just- years. I've been here actually less than a year. Okay. Yeah, so I'm brand new and enjoying it a lot. So. Cool. Looking forward to getting into that. Yeah. Jeff Bredesen is here too. Sure. Hey, Jeff, how are you, my man? Yeah, man. SP USA ventilation system. Correct. How's it going? It's going really good. Man. Yeah. Yeah, we can get into a little detail, but it's going really good. Good is year it? going, a lot of demand. Good. Any problems with the supply chain oh, we all hear about? Lord, Tons of problems. <laughs> really? Oh, I see. Have now. a beer. Yeah. You, need, you need some tequila. <laughs> it settles you down. It settles you down. No better way to start a long weekend than exactly. this. There you go. 100%. That's right. Hopefully you don't have to go back to the office after this uh, little track. Out. How long you been in this business? How long you been I've been, been in doing HVAC it? for 23 years at Have least. you really? Yeah. Wow. I'm only 26. Okay. Wow. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Yeah. You're like Benjamin Button going on the other way. the other way. Yeah. The opposite way, right? We all, but well, you were in HVAC for a long time. Yeah, Johnson yeah. Controls, Good. then CIS before that, and then just throughout some, some smaller companies. Spent time in Europe working, for, running sales for Johnson Controls in Europe. And Good. yeah, landed in Jacksonville two years ago. Two years. Mm. Yeah. How do you like it? I like it. Yeah, yeah we live out the beach. It's not a it's bad the thing. Best, you know? man. I live out there too, man. Yeah. It's nothing like it. Great yeah. community. Yep. Well, welcome, man, and welcome to the show. Appreciate Thank it. You. All right, Stephanie, so how'd you get involved in the entertainment world? Uh, you know, the did you start off as a musician, as a singer, you're playing guitar, learning piano? How'd you get Yeah, going so I younger? have been vocalizing since I've been born, okay. pretty much. Sure. Uh, <laughs> So my first uh, paid gig was when I was 16 uh, okay. for a uh, like a, com- a commercial for a corporate commercial, okay. singing the national yeah. anthem. Wow. Sure. And so ever since then, I've been kind of a paid uh, a paid vocalist, okay. and uh, and I was in a band in high school called Shades of Gray. Okay. <laughs> cool. Okay. Uh, awesome. Very descriptive. I like. It. Insert joke it here. Was, yeah. yeah. It wasn't. It's it's not. Yeah. yeah it, it it was a classic rock band. Rock band. So it was kind okay. of fun. But uh, we had a couple gigs. One for the talent show, and the other at a like a little county fair kind cool. of thing. I think they like paid us twenty five bucks each for like five hours worth of music, you know? Um, And then it just kind of continued on uh, doing uh, uh, my own, I only have my own CDs and, um, you know, I've done a lot of national anthems, a few hundred around the country. Have you done a few hundred yeah. national anthems? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Is there anything more daunting than having to sing the Ooh. national anthem in front of a huge crowd? I and have, it is. I and have, on TV. Yeah. And on TV. I, yeah. I absolutely love it. Yeah. To me... I will take any opportunity to sing it, regardless if I get paid or not. Okay. Um, it, and I've done like cue up the music. Let's go. <laughs> let's go. What the hell? Uh, I think she's saying something here. So, yeah, let's you go. You know, my bucket list items were like Fenway. I've done that twice. Oh, uh, yeah. uh, Wrigley Field. Oh yeah. Uh, you know, and some you know the Vikings, obviously, and okay. some like all the the national sports teams in uh, Minnesota. And so it's been a blessing for me to be able to sing this beautiful hymn to our country. No doubt. And I love it. It's the only. 90 seconds that you have everybody's undivided attention. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Fair Thousands point. of people. That's all. Yep. I mean, that's respect. Yeah, yeah. no doubt. I mean, you literally, there's no other place where everybody's Thousands of people are that silent and listening right. to you. What is, Sing. so I've never asked this to someone that sings the national anthem. What, what's the hardest part to hit in the national anthem? The last part because. You know, like the home it, of the brave or land, you know, home of the Free, the free. Uh, yep, because the free. what happens um, if you if you this is a little key, yep. if you know a singer's decent, um, if you hear the first note that you sing and then go fast forward all the way to the second note to the end, it's okay. the same exact note. Yeah. And you'll see oh. how far they're off. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> because oh, yeah. everybody's like, yeah. what? Yeah. Probably, you got nothing to follow. You have so nothing to just... follow. Yeah. So oh. it's, it's really, it's that's how you can tell how far off they are. Because it's yep. really hard to sing, especially there's so much echoing. Yeah. You know, but yeah. We're, we're all going to be critiquing every football game. <laughs> <laughs> oh, absolutely. Yeah. You're going to be listening to it even more. Is that the same key? Uh, he's he's humming that same yeah. for, <laughs> way for the end. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. yeah. Forget the Hail Mary. Yeah. Let's talk about the National That's right. That's right. That's right. Jeff, how about, you ever, as running your company, do you ever have to get in front of a big group? you have to give speeches? you have yeah. to give demonstrations, presentations? 
Yeah. In sales or what? What's your? What's, no, I'm president of the company. So you handle it all. Yeah. So I, I gave a big presentation today. Yeah. We call it the all hands meeting, but we announced cool. a, a cost of living adjustment for folks because the inflation's rampant. Sure. Mm -hmm. I feel bad for the people working. You know, they have no other way to increase their income. So we right. we come up with a program to cool. give them a cost of living adjustment based on the yeah. CPI. So that's great. It's encouraging to them, and it, yeah. was, it was fun for me. That makes them feel yeah. awesome. Appreciate it. Right? Like appreciative, we're watching, right? right? Absolutely. And I, I was thinking about a couple of days. Seventy five bucks at the gas pump, you oh, know, and, and you're sitting there going, For you know, I make a yeah. decent living. How about how about now? I've I have uh, four in the home right mm, now, but mm. every time I go grocery, I love going grocery shopping. <laughs> it's very peaceful for me. Yeah. I don't yeah. know why, but it's very peaceful because yeah. they're not take, there. Just give, my, give me shopping. give me the list I because they <laughs> say hi to people when I see them. If yeah. you know if I want to, or I just you know get my stuff. But without booze, it's two hundred every time. I'm like two hundred every time. I'm like what. Where do you I'm shop? I'm not even buying yeah. wine. I'm not even buying like like Publix. Yeah, yeah. I love going to Publix. The Bogos. Yeah, I'm a Bogo hunter I like now. The Bogo. I'm a Bogo hunter, no yeah. doubt about it. But uh, yeah, the inflation's there. So good that you do that. You got to take care of your people. You got to, right? Because it's a, I mean, it's that's a really very important. competitive labor market yeah. out there right now. If we don't take care of them, somebody else will. Yeah, yeah no doubt. You, great point. Yeah. You know, Dick Vermeil, I, I, the great coach. I've been able to interview a few times. He always said, when you're in a leadership position, you got to let them know you care mm -hmm. about them, like mm -hmm. genuinely care about them and then they'll do mm -hmm. anything for you they'll, yeah. whatever you need them to do they'll do it as yeah. long as they know they're being treated right and fair and, and being taken care of like you're doing what was the old phrase it was nobody cares how much you know until they know how much you care right? that's I mean, right no, that that honor. Honor. Care it's better than the stick you yeah, know yeah. way back absolutely there. I had to dig the files deep all right real quick uh stephanie tell us about starlet's web and uh everything yeah. else you got going on so with all the like different bands I've been in, I decided to create my own band called okay. Starless Web. It's a tribute to women in pop rock country cool. and groove from the 80s to today. So Ooh. we do everything that's female fronted, okay. uh, band Heart. or oh, like Heart, that kind of stuff. Of course, Blondie yeah. or she too early. Of course. Oh, oh wow. yeah, that's cool. We do everything. Lita Ford. What? Mm. Lead a Ford? Of course. Nice. That, that was, was a yeah. good no, we do, we do I, I, all of it. I wasn't there with you. We do things that are like from Paramore <laughs> yeah. and from like oh, Lizzo cool. and yeah. from like, wow. I mean, just all your classics, you know, uh, that you, you like to listen awesome. to. Plus it's like kind of obscure things. And it's really, really fun. Like Janet Jackson. And so. Get um, people moving. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And it's really Support. great to be able to have a niche to focus in on women in music because mm -hmm. they brought us so many wonderful songs yeah. all these no decades doubt. and they're not even focused on i mean we have your five you know joan jett pat benatar sure. all these yeah. girl, women yeah, that are always played shot. but not, not of anything <laughs> else you know Good. so yeah. um yeah so i've owned that for i created that and the band is based in minneapolis okay. and now that i've moved here um after this summer unfortunately i'm gonna have to just kind of pull back on that and do my own solo stuff okay, because it's cool. just a little too hard to manage. Listen, the music scene's pretty cool. North from North from St. Yeah. Augustine, Jacksonville, up to Fernandina. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of cool talent, a lot of yeah. opportunities for bands and musicians yeah. and it's out there. So good luck. Good luck. Thank and you welcome so to Jayville. Same you. to you as well. Keep Thanks it rocking. So Appreciate Keep doing you. the good work. Cheers yes, to everybody. Thank you. Thanks for coming on the show. Patrick, thank you. Likewise. Always a pleasure, my Enjoy. friend. Cheers. 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 That's going to do it for us here on The Horse's Mouth, uh, brought to you by our friends at Sonovas Bank at the bar. Hey, listen, this is what we do. We talk about business. We talk about life. We talk about good times right here in this great city of Jacksonville each and every week. So until next time, be safe and stay cool. We'll see you right here on The Horse's Mouth. Cheers. This is a Clydesdale. Despite what you see in the commercials, he doesn't play football. He won't bring me a cold one as much as I wish he would. He does not fall easily in love with his kitty cat pals, of which he has none. He's just really good at being a horse on this ranch. I run with help from my banker at Sonovas, the bank of here. Really, Bruce?